Hi, in today's video I'm going to show you how I created this little Christmas mitten design in Scan and Cut Canvas using basic shapes. You can cut an insert for the inside if you want to. Obviously you can resize it as well once you've made it. Okay, so I'm in Scan and Cut Canvas and the first thing I'm going to do is come over to the basic shapes. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I'm going to choose this shape here. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to rotate it vertically to keep it in line. Now I'm going to come to the basic shapes and choose a rectangle. Again, I'm going to hold the shift key down and rotate it to keep it vertical. And I'm going to squash it in until it's just a very thin line. I want to make sure it's bigger than the height of this and then I'm going to position it on top. I'm going to zoom in just on this centre section because I want this thin shape I've just made to line up with the middle of this arched shape. So I'm just going to make sure that this line here lines up directly on top of here so you can use the arrows on your keyboard and just manipulate it into, into position and then I'm going to zoom back out I'm going to select both this thin rectangle should be on top and I'm going to go to edit subtract and that's cut that in half but these are still grouped together so the way that you separate them now is select them right click and choose divide and I can get rid of that one I don't need it now I'm going to come back to the basic shapes and I'm going to choose this shape here. First thing I'm going to do is shrink it down a little bit and then I'm just going to rotate it and then I'm going to position it over this shape until it looks in proportion. And um, this middle blue dot here I'm lining up with the edge of this arch shape. Then I'm going to select both, I'm going to go to edit and weld and if it looks how I'm expecting it to look I will leave it like that if it isn't I would hit undo and then I would manipulate this a little bit more you know move it higher or lower however you want and then just keep selecting both and do edit weld until you're happy with your basic shape and I think that looks okay so now I'm going to select it and create a duplicate and put that on one side for now. Then I'm going to create another duplicate. So I'm going to select it, right click, hit duplicate. And then with this one, I'm going to mirror it. So I'm going to go to edit, flip horizontally. And then I'm going to line it up so these two center lines overlap slightly. Now you don't want to overlap them too much because that will distort the shape of your card but you want them overlapped enough so that they weld. I'm going to select them both, I'm going to go to edit and align them both by the bottom edge because I know that's a straight edge so I'll know that they'll line up together and while they're both selected I'm going to go to edit and weld. And that now becomes the basis for my card. Now. The card that I cut this in has got a texture on it. So I cut it with the textured side up. So if you imagine this is my piece of A4 card, this is all textured and that's how I cut it. So when I fold this in half, this is the front and this is the back. And I want a matting layer. So that's not going to sit on top of there. So what I need to do is flip this. So select it, edit, mirror, so it's the right way around for a start. And now I want to make it smaller so it sits within this main base card shape. So with it selected, I'm going to come to edit, create offset, take it down to 0 0.08 and say inward. And then say OK. And then I'm going to get the smaller shape. And again, just for the purposes of the video, I'm going to colour it green so hopefully you'll see it better. And that is what I cut in the pattern paper. Now, I'm going to use this shape, which is 
the basic is half the card as a guide for me making my cuff for the front. So I'm going to come over here now, I'm going to choose the scallop rectangle and I'm going to position it roughly over here and I'm going to take it down in size so it overhangs this base card ever so slightly. I didn't weld this to the base card, I just did this as a separate piece and I only put it on the front of the card and I'm going to position it until it kind of looks roughly right. Then I'm going to get another rectangle, I'm going to squash it down again to make it just a thin shape, select it, position it over the scallop and just line it up with what will be the base of this card here. Move that out of the way, select both. This rectangle has to be on top, this, sorry, this thin long strip rectangle has to be on top of the scallop for it to subtract. If you do this and you do edit subtract and it disappears, it means that you've got your big scallop on top of your, your thin rectangle. So just realign them as I've shown you in other videos. So again, that split that in half, but it's still grouped together. So you right click and you choose divide. Now I can get rid of that because I don't need it. This becomes the cuff which I cut in white card that sat on top of the front of my card. But again, I put a matting layer on it in pattern paper. So again, I want to select it, go to edit, offset, take it down to 0 0.08 and choose inward and say OK. And that creates my matting layer. So the black is my base card, the green is what I cut in blue pattern paper, this smaller shape I cut in blue pattern paper and this I cut in white card. Now again if you want an insert for your card select your main body of your card, go to edit, offset, take it down to 0 0.08 and say inward and say OK. And then I select this and I make it red. As I've said in previous videos, the scan and cut cannot cut by colour, but for me it's a visual aid. So when I save this up here and I give it a name and I save it, if I come back to this in 6 or 12 months time, I know that anything that's on my screen in red is an insert, anything that's in green is a matting layer. So I just colour them all to suit and as I say it's a visual guide you don't have to do it then I would separate the pieces out get rid of the pieces I no longer need give it a name up here and save it and that's how I made the Christmas mitten again just from basic shapes within scan and cut canvas so I hope you found that helpful please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so and I will see you in the next video.